this is one big ginkgo. Oh, it's actually a double trunk, look at that. Yeah, I would say this is one of the great trees of Central Park. When I first started looking at trees, I couldn't tell my ash from my aspen. Is it possible I had these as ashes? Well, Ned, I'm making a note. That's a significant Atlantis that needs to be on here. But with Ned's outstanding mentoring. The tree is riddled with sapsucker holes all the way down the trunk. Plus a good guidebook or two, I began to develop the ability to identify tree species. We have a lot of witch hazel in Central Park. The unusual thing about the witch hazel is that it flowers in the fall. And even though its leaves are dropping off like the other trees, it's still blooming. Having been a devoted birder for many years, I thought there really can't be all that much to identifying trees, but I soon found out it was not that simple. There was an ash down there. Look at that big one on the path. They just cut that. They were afraid it was gonna fall. This particular area is so dense with trees that it really took an enormous amount of time to map it and get it right. I quickly learned that the field marks for tree identification vary widely depending on the tree's age. Here are some of the larger sweet gums in the North Woods. Look at these massive giants. From their trunk, I would say they're about 75 years old. The season, and even between individual specimens. And many trees freely hybridize with different species, creating individuals that have the characteristics of two species. Now this is one of the more unusual trees in Central Park. This is a hybrid oak. It's a cross between a shingle oak and a black oak. These two leaves look entirely different, yet they both come from the same tree. Now add to that all the thousands of cultivars that are created with unusual features such as leaf shape or coloring, and you could begin to see the level of difficulty involved. What we have here is a very healthy specimen of a honey locust, and this is an extremely thorny honey locust. Certain cultivars of this same tree have been created without thorns, and many of those are used on plantings of city streets. Suddenly, this isn't just tree identification or information architecture or cartography anymore. This is the beginning of a nervous breakdown divided by 172 species. Uh, look at this mess. How the heck am I supposed to make sense of this? My goal was to help separate and identify all the tree species. This tree is a cryptomeria, and look at that. Tiny little green cones. But at the same time, I wanted to create a natural, organic look. It took a lot of tweaking and revision, but ultimately, I came up with different symbols for 172 species of trees and shrubs in Central Park. Every tree that you see on the map represents a real species of a real tree in the park. This is a spindle tree. I know of only four spindle trees in the park. This is the fruit. This one, which is cracking open, is revealing red seeds on the inside. Look at that. The actual count of trees on the map, 19,630.